Our story begins in the Victorian era, a time of unprecedented progress and innovation. One of the most iconic symbols of this period is the London Underground, a subterranean railway that was not just the first of its kind in the UK, the first of its kind in the entire world. Proposed as early as the 1830s, when horses and carriages were still the primary mode of transport in the nation's capital, the idea of an underground railway in London faced immense technical and financial challenges. Yet, visionaries of the time pushed ahead anyway, and in 1863, the Metropolitan Railway opened, marking the birth of the London Underground. With the city streets overwhelmed by congestion, the Underground was a, a groundbreaking solution. Engineers and planners foresaw the city's future needs, creating an infrastructure that would serve generations. They dug tunnels using primitive tools, and they were driven by a relentless vision for urban mobility. Fast forward to today, and we see a very different approach. The High Speed 2 project, or HS2 as it's better known, was conceived to address the UK's growing rail demand and urban congestion, much like the underground in its time. Approved in 2012, HS2 promised to revolutionise the UK's transportation network, reducing travel times and boosting economic growth. But unlike the unwavering commitment of the Victorian era, HS2 has faced numerous setbacks. From budget overruns to political debates and local opposition, HS2's vision has been significantly curtailed. Originally planned to connect London, Birmingham, Manchester and Leeds, the project's northern extension has been scaled back with the leg to Leeds scrapped in 2021 and then the Manchester leg of the project was subsequently scrapped in 2023. The comparison between Victorian England and modern England reveals a critical difference in mindset. Victorians operated with a long-term vision, building infrastructure that anticipated future growth. They embraced risks and pushed boundaries of engineering for the sake of progress. Today, short-term constraints often dictate the scope of projects. Budgetary concerns, pol political cycles, immediate public opinion overshadow long-term benefits. This cautious approach leads to compromised solutions falling short of transformative change. The success of Victorian projects was driven by a strong public and political will. There was a collective belief in the benefits of in the benefits of infrastructure investment. In contrast, contemporary projects like HS2 suffer from a lack of cohesive, cohesive support marked by political divisions and regional disparities. The story of the London Underground and HS2 offers some valuable lessons. It highlights the importance of a long-term vision, willingness to take risks, and the need for cohesive public and political backing. Reviving the spirit of Victorian ambition requires embracing the future challenges with boldness. Recognising the transformative potential of well-planned infrastructure projects and committing to their realisation despite obstacles is crucial. The legacy of Victorian visionaries shows us that ambition and foresight we can build a future that stands the test of time. Now, you might think that the London Underground and HS2 comparison was a one-off, a blip, an anomaly. It isn't. The M25 Orbital Motorway was conceived as far back as 1913, just 12 years after the Victorian era came to an end. The notion was re-examined as part of the Highway Development Plan uh, conducted in 1937, but construction wouldn't begin for another 40 years. Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher finally conducted the official opening on the 29th of October 1987, a full 50 years after the Highway Development Plan was published. The original 117 mile long M25 was built mostly as a dual three lane motorway. Most of it has since been widened to, to dual, fuel lane, uh, dual four lanes, while there is a dual five lane section between junctions 12 and 14 and a dual six lane section between junctions 14 and 15. In other words, it took almost 70 years from conception to construction. And when that construction actually happened, it was built just big enough and just wide enough, but with no thought whatsoever for future traffic levels. Now, compare and contrast that approach with an example from Myanmar capital, Napierdor. It was featured on a Top Gear special a few years ago, and I've got a section of that now. Have a look at this. We have to get through Napierdor's morning rush hour. This rush hour traffic's not as bad as I thought. The roads were completely empty and massive. One, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, 16 lanes now. <laughs> Wait, it's gone bigger. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Twenty! It's 20 lanes now. This may look stupid and pointless, but actually, it really isn't. The problem with most cities is that the growth comes and the city simply can't accommodate it. That happened in London, Rome, Paris, Bangkok, everywhere. That is not going to happen here. I think this must be the first city built entirely in anticipation of the future. Just to be clear here, Myanmar, which was formerly called Burma, was previously classified as a third world country. A third world nation now has greater foresight than a nation that once ruled the world. Makes you proud to be British, doesn't it? <laughs>